Hello, hello, welcome to uh, my YouTube channel. So um, I briefly want to talk about certain things that you can do on your Cisco Meraki dashboard to improve the Wi-Fi performance. And um, the reason for that is because we have worked on hundreds, hundreds of Wi-Fi deployments and we have troubleshooted hundreds of Wi-Fi networks from different vendors, different solutions, so on and so forth. And um, something that we've seen is that there are many problems that could have been avoided with proper planning. And also that, you know, the nature of Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, sometimes you have so many problems that are so many things that are outside your control. But each Wi-Fi solution offers some type of features that are going to help you improve the performance. Right here, you could see that I have my 2.4 and my 5 gigahertz band. There's a lot of noise in there. There's a lot of interference on the 2.4. And you could see that my 5 gigahertz uh, band here is much better uh, for, for the most part. <clears throat> so um, I want to go over five best practices, right? It's five Cisco Meraki features to improve Wi-Fi performance. Number one. No more than three SSIDs per access point. Now that number is not a it's not written on a stone. It's just a best practice. Most documentations they go for something between uh, three and five, but the truth is the less is better, and it is a best practice for you to have a. To, to have a the bare minimum number of access points that you can deploy on your Wi-Fi network so that your spectrum does not look like <clears throat> this with a lot of uh, co-channel interference and adjacent channel interference. So um, whenever possible, limit your number of SSIDs that you are broadcasting and we're going to explore more on that just in a couple of minutes. So that's out of the way. Uh, <clears throat> enable band steering on SSIDs broadcasting when you have SSIDs broadcasting on both bands. Uh, so let's come um, right here. Let me minimize this and come uh, and come to this section in the Miraki dashboard. So you can enable um, SSID steering, which means that when you have um, an SSID that is broadcasting on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band, like for instance, in this case, this SSID is right, that you see that I have that enabled on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. Uh, when you enable band steering, what's going to happen is that when a, when a device, when a client device connects to your Wi-Fi network and that client device supports both bands, the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band, the access point is going to ask the client, or it's not going to force it, but it's going to nudge, it's going to ask the client, or it's going to try to steer the client into the 5 gigahertz band. And you may ask why, and this is the reason why, because 2.4 in most environments is so saturated and and you know like it's been around since forever right since the beginning of Wi-Fi so you want to move any device that is capable of supporting the 5 gigahertz band to the 5 gigahertz band and one of the easiest ways to do that is by enabling band steering now keep in mind that it is up to the client to decide whether it's going to use a 2.4 of the or the 5 gigahertz band but to be honest with you most newer devices or most new devices that support the 5 gigahertz band they are going to connect to the 5 gigahertz band um, if there is a, a, a network providing reliable service <clears throat> in there okay so let's go to the next one the next one is um Let's see, plant SSID coverage, only enable SSIDs if needed. Okay, the reason for that 
It's because you may have a Wi-Fi deployment obviously depending on your Wi-Fi deployment, right? Let's say that you have 10, 20, 100, 200 access points or you, maybe you are a small shop and you have five or six access points in your office. So um, let me go come back here. So when you create SSIDs on an access point, what's going to happen is that the on, on one physical access point, a virtual SSID is going to be created for that access point, right? And that's going to create a lot of overhead management frames and, and you know, more utilization on the access points and so on and so forth. So um, as you could see here, uh, like this is one of my um, one of my access points in my in my home office, and uh, I have a uh, seven SSIDs, and I'm just doing this as an example, obviously. But um, only enable the SSIDs that that you need, right? If if you're working in a in a business, right, and you have uh, uh, the office area, and then you have, let's say, that is a factory, or it's a distribution center or a warehouse, and then you have the uh, the warehouse section. There's no reason for you to be broadcasting the uh, Wi-Fi scanners SSIDs that people use on the uh, on the floor to inventory and and scan the uh, the you know the, the inventory. Uh, there's no reason to have that SSID in the uh, in the office area if they don't need it, of course. So always do your planning. Uh, you know, if if for whatever reason you're going to be deploying three SSIDs, do the planning. Make sure that th the people in that AP coverage area do require that SSID. If they don't require that. You can uh, disable the SSID from the SSID from being broadcasted uh, on the access point, right? Then that's the solution. Let me come here. We may find it. Uh, no, let me go. Let me go right here. Where is that solution? Radio settings. Oh, let me go to. Oh, if you go to wireless, you go to SSID availability. Let me leave this. Da, da, da. Here it is, right? You can select your SSIDs and decide on which access points you uh, want to uh, advertise it from, but you have to do some uh, configuration prior to it. You have to tag the access points. So uh, let's move to the next one. Implement technical solutions to help you minimize SSID, SSID broadcasting. Right. while providing uh, what? <laughs> Just concentrate on this. Implement technical solutions to help you minimize SSID broadcasting. <clears throat> so each Wi-Fi solution is going to have different built-in features that you can implement to minimize the number of SSIDs. Again, the reason why you have different SSIDs is, is to provide different type of network access to your client devices, right? To your wireless client devices. For instance, you're going to have like an SSID that is going to be mapped to a VLAN and you're going to be doing this routing to, to the switches and to access the network resources in that way. So um, th that's the main reason why people create so many, so many SSIDs. Uh, <clears throat> but you can actually uh, you know, like find built-in solutions or add solutions to your Wi-Fi configuration to have a minimum number of SSIDs. I've seen like one or two SSIDs. And with that, you can do the mapping behind that, right? You could use um, 8021X. You could apply group, policy, um, group policies. You could implement in the case of uh, Meraki, you could implement Cisco ICE, or you could also do System Manager to control your devices. And uh, so let me show you that here real quick. So let's go to SSIDs, leave this. <clears throat> so as you could see, um, Meraki allows you to configure up to 15 SSIDs 
It doesn't mean that if you have 15 SSIDs, it's for you to broadcast 15 SSIDs out of you know every single access point. That's not the reason for that. The reason why you have you know up to 15 SSIDs is because you can create and assign the SSIDs accordingly, right? Whatever you know you, you need them. So, but going back to the point, um, for instance, let me uh, let me come down here, office um, edit settings. <clears throat> As you can see on one of my SSIDs, I have this configured to use 802.1x with my RADIUS server, and I configure um, Microsoft NPS for that. And you know, this is the configuration, it's super simple. So uh, what's gonna happen with this is that you can configure your SSID to authenticate using uh, radius and in your radius server you're going to be able to configure um, attributes and map those attributes to to vlans so there is a great way for you to you know if you have a, a microsoft uh, environment uh, in your company or if you have a radius server uh, you can configure that for authentication and create a VLAN tag mapping. And when a user connects to the network and authenticates based on that group membership, let's say that you have a, uh, a sales department, IT, HR, research, um, so on and so forth, you can map those groups to a VLAN so when the user authenticates using their network credentials, the system is going to apply the attributes and it's going to assign that user to the corresponding VLAN, even when you are just connecting to one SSID. Uh, so um, another way that you can do that is by applying to, uh, let me come down here, group policies. <clears throat> Group policies is a beautiful feature. So uh, you can create group policies and apply these group policies to the devices connecting to the SSID. So let me come down here. Let me, uh, for instance, use uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, this one as an example. Right, so let me come down to right here. <clears throat> let me do this real quick. Right, so you're gonna see laptops. Windows, laptops, iPhone, we're gonna block the suckers. All right, so you can create a group policy. And uh, let's say that we wanna do the IoT device or, oh, where is it? Yeah, let's use this, the laptop instead. <clears throat> you can create a, a group policy. And in the group policy, you're gonna be able to have a lot of configuration settings that you can assign to it. As you can see here, you can create scheduling, bandwidth limitations. Uh, you can have uh, layer three and layer seven firewall settings on it. If you have Cisco umbrella, you can connect with umbrella and also apply the settings there. And one of the settings that it offers is VLAN tagging. And as you could see here for, war for wireless only. <clears throat> So what's gonna happen is that one of the ways that you can use the group policies is when you go to your SSID, <clears throat> one of the options that you have is assign group policies by device, by, by, uh, by device type. So when you have different devices that connect to your SSID, you can assign the group policies that you have pre-configured along with the VLAN tagging that it's in there, as you can see here. So in that case, we're using the laptop screw policy. When I have a Windows device connecting to my SSID, that 
crew policy and all its settings are going to apply to that device that I have. And one of the settings that I configured is the VLAN tagging. So in that way, you can have only one SSID and manage all your devices to have different VLAN settings and network settings applied to them when they connect. Now, something to keep in mind is that this is not 100% accurate. You're going to have some false negatives and false positives. So it is a good solution when it works. When it doesn't work, you have to find something else. So uh, let's go back to the next one. Um, oh, here it is, actually. So, oh, so we talked about... Uh, Implementing technical solutions, we mentioned 8021X, we mentioned group policies. Uh, there are two more that I don't have the licenses for them yet on my environment, but you can implement Cisco ICE and System Manager for that too. And that's going to get rid of the problem here with uh, these group policies where sometimes the system is going to detect them or not. So you could do that. So going back to the best practice, let's go to the uh, last one, adjust power settings, but only when needed, all right? So power settings is one of those features that we don't really use that much, except uh, the, this is the only scenario where we've used that uh, many times. When we have deployed Wi-Fi networks for high density environments, where we have to install um, access points that are relatively cl relatively close to each other to provide Wi-Fi service to a large number of users. You know, sometimes they have their phones and their laptops connected at the same time. And at the same time, you know, think about like you know, like lecture halls and 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 environments like that, right? That you're going to have like hundreds of people connected uh, to the Wi-Fi network in a short area. And sometimes we have to install different access points in different locations. So in that case, you might want to adjust the power settings. And, you know, you can do that under the wireless radio settings, and then you go to profiles. And you have the option of adjusting the power settings on the 2.4 and the five gigahertz band. And remember, adjusting the power settings is the power settings to power the antennas, right? Just keep that in mind. Some people get confused thinking that they're lowering the power settings on the, the powers that the access point is receiving. That's not the case. It's the power the access point uses to broadcast the, R, the, the radio frequency signal on the antennas. So <clears throat> this is a um, trial and error type of thing. Y you have to like do it once, adjust it, and until you find that sweet spot that works for you. Um, we have also um, enabled or, or configured power settings when we're doing uh, multi-floor Wi-Fi deployments that because of the building layout, we have to install the access points pretty much on the same area on each different floor. So th that is another way for you to maybe adjust the power settings. Um, so you could do it right here. And um, other than that, let me come back here. So that's it. So those are the five uh, Cisco Meraki features that you could use to improve your Wi-Fi performance and make it look better than what it looks like right here in my test environment. So I hope it helps and you have a great day. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. We're going to be creating a lot of I, you know, like IT best practices when it comes to Cisco, uh, Moragi, Cisco, uh, firewalls, um, Fortinets, and all these type of solutions that we deploy on a day-to-day -day basis. Have a great day. Bye.